Today's topic is the tibia bone, which is also known as the shin bone. The leg bones are among the strongest bones in the human body and include the tibia, the fibula, and the femur. The shin bone is the second largest bone in the body after the femur. The lower leg bones are made up of two bones, the tibia and the fibula, and they bear most of the weight. The tibia bone bears the weight of the body and it consists of a broad upper end, a triangular shaft with a sharp anterior border and a slightly wider lower end, and there is a protrusion downward called the medial malleasis. The upper end consists of two condyles and each articular surface is slightly concave. The two surfaces are called the tibial plateau, articulating from the femoral condyles to form the knee joint. Posterior by the intercondylar eminence, the intercondylar eminence is formed by the two medial and lateral tubercles. Anatomy, medial and lateral condyles. Two prominent condyles are seen on the proximal tibia. The medial condyle is one that faces the midline of the body. The other that faces the outside part of the body or laterally is referred to as the lateral condyles. It connects to the thigh condyles to form the knee joint. The middle condyle is larger than the lateral condyle. Tibial plateau. The tibial plateau is a flat area formed by the upper surfaces of the two condyles. Intercondyloid eminence. Intercondylar eminence or tibial spine is located between the two condyles. It appears as the medial and lateral intercondylar tubercles on either side. The Gertie tubercle is another name for the lateral tubercle. Intercondylar area. It is the area between the two condyles, as the title indicates. Medial malleolus. The medial malleolus is a bony protrusion on the distal end's medial surface. It joins the talus to create part of the ankle joint. Fibular notch. The distal end's lateral surface has a fibular notch, which is a facet for the distal end of the fibula. A thickening of the interosseous membrane connects the tibia and fibula to produce the distal tibiofibular joint at this location. Function. Because the tibia is made up of several long bones, it plays an important function in both bearing weight and moving different areas of the body. Red bone marrow is found in the vicinity of the stem of numerous long bones, including the tibia. It implies it plays a crucial role in the creation of the numerous red blood cells seen in the body. The bone marrow becomes yellow and fat-filled as it ages. The anterior tibial area is the reference point for leg stability. It also assists in taking a lot of the lower leg. It also makes other tasks like running, walking, kicking, and climbing easier. Injuries. Let's now talk about the injuries that can happen to the tibia. The most common type of injury to the tibia is fractures. Since the tibia is a bone in the extremities, it is extremely delicate. In fact, a tibial plateau fracture is one of the most prevalent types of tibial fracture. This severe damage necessitates non-surgical and in certain cases surgical treatment. If a person is hit by a vehicle, the tibia is in such position that the bone can easily shatter. Knee fractures in the tibia can develop due to physical trauma or any type of force, such as an impact exercise or other reasons. Another common form of fracture that can result in a shattered tibia is a stress fracture in the tibia. The most typical symptom of a fractured tibia bone is pain and inability to stand or walk. This is less likely if only the tibia is fractured and also restricted range of motion in the knee or ankle area, and bruising or skin discoloration surrounding the break. Treatment. When you go to the doctor, he will check your leg and foot to discover the area of discomfort, and then he will ask you to walk or run to confirm the nature of the condition. An X-ray or an MRI scan may be necessary to ensure there is no tibial fracture or tendinitis. The doctor can use a needle attached to a measuring instrument to monitor the pressure in the tibia while the foot is resting or moving. The treatment of the tibia pain can take a period ranging from 3 to 12 weeks, and the treatment during this period is based on relieving pain and inflammation, correcting problems caused by the wrong exercise, and rehabilitating the muscles through massage, stretching, and some exercises. And this is done as follows. Number 1. 
Use cold water compresses frequently during the day. Number two, elevate the feet when laying down or sitting. Number three, the use of pain relievers such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs will reduce the severity of inflammation in addition to reducing pain. Number four, use orthotics, which can be obtained by a pharmacy or sports supply store. Number five, do the exercises your doctor recommends to help your recovery. Thank you for watching our video. Please do not forget to like and share the video. Also, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our latest videos.